Hi there! In today's video I will show you how you can create your own autonomous AI agent using Python. Now I have created my own AI agent previously, which is called GPT Autopilot. And this can write files to the file system and read files and do all kinds of cool stuff. And you can use it to create full coding projects by just prompting ChatGPT. But we are not going to implement this fully in today's video because this is too much code to go over in a video. But the basic functionality for an AI agent using the function calling of the OpenAI API is fairly simple. So we will go through that in today's video. So let's get started right away. So the first thing we will do is we will just create a new file. Let's call this agent.py. And in the agent.py, we will import OpenAI, which is the official library for the OpenAI API. And to use this, you have to run pip install OpenAI. And if you have this already, but you have the old version, you have to say upgrade to upgrade the latest version, because only that one supports the function calling. But I have that installed already, so I'm not going to do that. Next, we have to define the OpenAI API key. So that we are going to do by saying OpenAI.API key equals, and then you can just paste in your API key here, or you can read it from a file, or you can read it from the environment variables. I will read it from the environment variables right now, if I remember how to do it. I do not. It's something like OS env or get env, something like this. OpenAI API key. And then of course we have to import OS, but this is probably not the right way. Let's do Python 3 and import OS and print OS get env OpenAI API key. Okay, maybe it is get env. So we'll use get env and then I will export it here. Export OpenAI API key equals and I will paste in my OpenAI API key here and then I will have it there so you will not see it. All right, I have done that now so I should have the API key here. And then how we send a message to ChatGPT is we say openai.chatcompletion.create and here we have to pass in the message, sorry messages, which will be some array of messages which we will define next. And we have to set the model, so we will use the GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613 because we have to use this version if we want to use the function calling API. And then to send the actual function definitions, we have to say functions equals functions, which again will be an array, which I will define soon. And we have to say function call is auto. Now, this can also be a specific name of a function if you wanted to call a specific function every time. And sorry, it is not actually just the name of the function, then it has to be like a dict of the name will be the function name, and you will have arguments, which will be maybe a list, I'm not sure, arg1 and so on. Just the, the name of the arguments that you have to pass in it. But we will use auto because we want ChatGPT to decide which function it is going to call. And then the way you get your response from this, you have to actually set this to response equals that. And then you will have something in there. I will just print the response for now because I don't remember. There's like something like choices zero mm, message content, something like this. But I don't quite remember. So I will just print the response and we will see what is in there. Now we have to define these messages and functions. So let's do that. Let's say here messages is a list and it's a list of dicts. So we will have to put here the role of the message, which we will set to user and the content of the message, which we will set to something. So for now, let's hard code this. Let's just say, tell me three jokes. So we will send this message to ChatGPT. And then we will define the functions. So if we say functions equals a dictionary, and this will, sorry, it will be a list again of a dictionary, which will have a name, which will be the function name. So in this case, when we want some jokes, then we could make a joke function. So let's do 
tell jokes and we will give a description and it will be tell jokes to the user and then we will have parameters which will be an object or a dict in python and it will have properties it will actually have type object and it will be properties and here we will have all the parameters that the function tell jokes takes so this will take a parameter of jokes and it will have a type of list sorry it is an array in this case because this is according to the json schema and then when we have an array we have to define the items so what are the types of the items that we will pass in this array and what we will pass in here is a string so we again have to say type is string and then we have to also set required and this is a list of all the required parameters so if we have multiple parameters here then we might want to say that only some of them are required so in this case we say jokes is required so what this does is this tells ChatGPT, okay you can call the tell jokes function which tells jokes to the user and you can pass in a jokes parameter which will be an array of strings so they will be the jokes and in fact i can add here a description of this description and it is going to be a, an array of jokes and now if we run this code then hopefully the answer from chat gpt will be please call tell jokes with an array of three jokes so let's see if that works so let's run python 3 agent.py and here is our response so we have choices zero message function call name tell jokes arguments jokes why don't scientists trust atoms because they make up everything why couldn't the leopard play hide and seek because he was always spotted why don't skeletons fight each other they don't have the guts so it worked just as we expect now in order to parse these arguments from here we have to use the json parser so let's first see how can we get the actual message so let's say that the message will be response choices index zero and message that will be the message and then in the message we will have the role the content and perhaps a function call if it is a function call so then we can say this if function call in message that means we have a function call that means chat gpt wants to call a function then we can get the name of the function so we can say that the function to call or just call it function call equals message function call and then we can get the name and the arguments so we can say function name equals function call name and function or just arguments arguments equals function call arguments now this is a json string so we can't directly get the jokes from here so we have to call json.dumps sorry json dump json dot um, loads so we will convert it into a dictionary and then there are multiple different ways of calling a function now you can do it something like there's some globals function and then you can get um, the function name and then you can call star star arguments but this is a bit dangerous because you can call any global function so how i did this in my gpt autopilot which might still not be the best way is that i created another module so i will create here gpt functions.py and i will define all the functions here so then i can say if has atter i think this is the way to do it if gpt functions has the attribute of function name then we will call gpt functions to be s here and this is probably get atter function name and then we do this star star arguments to unpack or whatever the right word is to take this json object and take all the keys and the values and 
pass them into the arguments of this function. And then we can add an else here and we can just print error called unknown function because ChatGPT can actually do this. Sometimes it calls a function that doesn't exist. So now we can define the function in our GPT functions. So let's go here and let's define tell jokes, which takes the jokes. And then from here we need to return something that we will then pass to ChatGPT. So it will be the answer from this. So this can be JSON data, but it can be just a string. It doesn't really matter. And in my GPT autopilot, I just return a string, just a message. So I'll just return from here, thanks for the jokes. And this is just a message that then will be passed to ChatGPT so that it knows that the function was called. And we have to import now our GPT functions module. And we have to import JSON, so we can actually parse the JSON. And then since we are returning something from the function, we can set that to the function response. And then what we can do is we can say, well, for now, let's just print and see what is the function response. So print function response. And I will print this response from ChatGPT up here. Now, I'm not quite sure about this syntax because this is all new to me. I'm not really a Python developer, but I think it's something like this. Now, you should handle errors here as well because not only the function name can be hallucinated by ChatGPT, the arguments can be invalid JSON. So in fact, already this, you should add like try here and then accept. And if you get an exception, then you can say that the function response is error invalid arguments. And then you could pass this to ChatGPT so it knows that it was called. But right now I will just print this and I will actually just do sys.exit1 and I will do the same here. And I have to import sys. So we will just exit the script right now if something goes wrong. So now if we run this, and assuming I didn't make any mistakes, then it should return the same thing as before, but also thanks for the jokes. So let's run this and see what happened. Okay, we got an error. GPT functions has no attribute get getatter. So I will check how I did it in my GPT autopilot project. So I will go to chatgpt.py and where is my arguments? Sorry, it is in GPT autopilot.py. Okay, get getatter GPT functions. Okay, it's that way, so. It is not a method, it is a function. So I will have to do it this way. Get atter from, get atter from GPT functions, the function name. So that is the right way of doing it. So let's run this again and see if this works this time. Yes, we got thanks for the jokes. Now, if you didn't already understand what this arguments thing does here and this JSON loads, then let me remove this response printing here. And now if I go to the tell jokes function, and if I print here the jokes, then perhaps you understand that the jokes from ChatGPT will be passed into this actual function. So if I run this, then I will only get the array of jokes or list of jokes and thanks for the jokes. So this is an actual Python array, Python list of jokes. So it will always be in the correct format, so it's easy to do something with it. Because if you just ask ChatGPT to tell you three jokes, they might be like comma separated or one per line or in a list or in a table or whatever, but this is always in the right format. Now, how do you make this an AI agent? Right now it is an agent that can tell jokes. <laughs> but it is not really an agent and it is not autonomous. So we should be able to tell it to do something because now we are just setting it here, tell three jokes. So how can we make it so that we can ask it to do something, it will do it, and then we can ask it to do something else? Well, we need a loop and it is beneficial for us to create a function first from this because now all of this is just procedural. So let's define a function. And let's call this run conversation. And now what do we need in here? We need the message that the user sent, but we also need to keep track of the messages 
because we want to keep them in the history so that you can refer to something else that has happened in the past. And if you want to tell it to do something that involves multiple functions, then it has to remember what functions it has called already. So let's pass in the message and messages. And let's move all this stuff in there. So we will do that. And the messages will be moved outside. And in fact, since we have a message, then this will be the message. So we will say message is that. And messages is empty because there's nothing at first. Now we could add a system message, which we will do, but not at the moment. And we can actually set the messages to be an empty list in the beginning. And now we could move these function definitions into the GPT functions file. So we don't have to have them here. So we can just then say GPT functions dot, let's call it definitions. And then we can add them here. So we have the actual functions and then we have definitions, which will be that. So now what we can do is, first of all, we have to add to the messages the latest message, which we get from here, which will be this. So we will say that messages dot append message. And then we send the request and we get the message. And then we check if it's a function call. Then we do the function call and we get the function response. And then how we respond to chat GPT from a function call is we do this. Let us in fact say that function response will be that here and function response will be that here. And we probably could move this into its own function. So it will be a little bit better. So we will say that if there is a function call in the message, then the function response will be parse function response from the message. So this will simplify things a little bit. So we can define here parse function response, which will take the message. And then we will do all this stuff in here. And then we can just return this, return error invalid arguments. And here we can also return the result from the function. And here we can return error called unknown function. So this way it's a bit easier to handle this because we don't have to then check down here do this only if we didn't get this error because now we just return it so that makes it more simple and then what we have to do here is we have to add the response to the messages so we will say that messages dot append and we will add a specific type of message for chat gpt which will have a role of function and we will have a name which will be the function name and the content which will be the response from the function. So it will be the function response. And then since ChatGPT can answer without a function call, then we could handle that case here. So else, what do we want to do then? Well, we would want to tell the user that ChatGPT said something. So we could just print GPT and we could add here the message content. And then we could ask the user to provide their next response to ChatGPT. So we could make this like an input and we can say that the user message will be input, GPT says that and a new line and you say this. And then we can pass this user message to the messages. So we will do the same thing as with the function, but this will be role user. And we don't have a name, we have just the content, which will be the user message. So if we get a function call, we run the function and send it to ChatGPT. Otherwise, we show the user what ChatGPT said and ask for an answer back. And then we send that answer back. And then we have to make this function recursive. So we will actually call it again. So we'll send the messages and then go back here and call it again. So let's do that. Let's say run conversation. And now we will pass in the message actually. So I will in fact do this message will be that. And here I will also do message will be that. We don't append it because we will append it here. So we just pass one of these messages to the run conversation function again. And we pass the messages as well. So that this will include the message that we added here previously. So then we can keep track of the messages all the time. 
Now, we don't want to hard code this tell three jokes message. So instead, what we will do is we will go down here and we will add here this input again. So we will say that user message is GPT and let's add here just what do you want to do? And then we say that the message is role user and the user message. And then we call run conversation with the message and we don't have to pass the messages because it will be empty at first by default. So we could add something here to print print GPT called function and get the actually I should put it up here because I don't have the function name until I get here called function this and I will add here the function name and in here we are returning thanks for the jokes and we are printing the joke. So that's fine. Let's do this and let's see what happens now. So if we now run this again, it will say, what do you want to do? So we can say anything now. I can just say, hello. And it should answer me with the regular chat GPT answer, which will be, how can I assist you today? Yes, so it will answer me. But if I say, tell me three jokes, then it will call the function, hopefully. Okay, it did call the function, but we got some sort of error. Function name is not defined. That's right, because we <laughs> parse it over here. So let's make it a tuple so we can get both of them. So let's take function name and function response. And we will return here function name and this. Uh, it's not the best way to do this, but... <laughs> But let's do it like this for now. And this will be the same thing. So we return the function name and the response. And here we also say function name and the response. Now, this is a lot of duplication. I really should have here like return function name and function response. But then I'm back into this that I'm setting it here. So I have to say function uh, response is that. But then I will have the problem that we shouldn't go into this if we have the function response already. Now I could move all of this up here, but then if there is an error in this one, we still go to the same exception, which might not be the worst thing, but I might want to have a different error for the invalid JSON and the invalid arguments. But whatever, let's do it like this. So now we should always have function response, whatever happens. And then we return function name and function response. And let's try to run this again. Tell me three jokes. Now, what happened here is that we told ChatGPT tell three jokes. And then it called tell jokes function with these jokes. And then we sent back the response, thanks for the jokes. And then it responded, sure, here are three jokes for you. Now, this is kind of weird and we are kind of doing this backwards because this really should be like get jokes. So we could do this the opposite way. So we could say get jokes and we could say that this is gets jokes from the joke database. And then this could be number of jokes. And we could pass this as the property or the parameter and the type will be number and we don't have the items here anymore and the description would be gets the specified number of jokes and we might say that the required is number of jokes and then if we return jokes from this function then they will be passed to chat GPT and then it will respond with those jokes so if I would then return from this JSON dot dumps which will convert a list into a JSON string and I would add the jokes here so I would add some jokes from here let's just copy these and I'll paste them in here now we should return a specific number of jokes but for this example it doesn't matter we are returning these all the time and just to show that it actually uses the jokes we defined here and not some random jokes then we can change these default jokes because it usually returns always these jokes so if we just say all the things here instead of that and how did the computer get wasted and why don't skeletons fight other skeletons and we save this and then we run this again 
then what should happen now is if we say tell three jokes then it should return those three jokes so it will call the get jokes function and then it will okay <laughs> something went wrong it just keeps getting the jokes uh, get jokes gets jokes from the joke database um, let's print the messages here so we can actually see what we are sending tell three jokes okay invalid arguments so did i define something wrong number of jokes number of jokes type number ah <laughs> the error comes from my function because i did not import json here and that, that is kind of the problem with doing this catch-all exception because we don't know what exception comes from here so let's try this again and if we say tell three jokes then it should tell three jokes exactly so here what happened is we told tell three jokes so we sent that message to ChatGPT, and then ChatGPT answered with get jokes and then we returned with these jokes and then ChatGPT responded sure here are three jokes for you and these are our jokes why don't scientists trust atoms because they make up all the things and how did the computer get wasted it took screenshots and why don't skeletons fight other skeletons they don't have the guts so now we can give ChatGPT some content of our own and it will format it in a nice way so now we could actually say something like put the jokes in a markdown table so now it could actually format this in a different way so now here we have a markdown table of the jokes and here it didn't call the function because it is already in the history but if i close this and i start over and i say put three jokes in a markdown table then it should call the get jokes again yes we called get jokes and then it will answer with a markdown formatted table like this so we have a joke heading and then we have all the jokes here and they are our jokes so now all there is left to do is just implement different functions that ChatGPT can do so let's do something like that so let's first remove our print statements from somewhere where did i put them here we won't print the messages anymore and we can go to our GPT functions and we can just add more functions to do something. So in my GPT autopilot, I created a write file function so that it can write to the file system. So we could do that. We could say define write file and we get the file name and the content. And then what we will do is we will just say with open file name in write mode as f, f.write content and then we can just return successfully written file file name and then we have to define this in the definitions so we actually give chat gpt information about this function so we will call this write file just the same as it was here now you can use different names but then you just have to map them when the function call comes from chat gpt so this is just an easy way so that you can define it the same way but we will say that this will write to a file writes content to a file and then it will take the file name which will be a string of the file name to write to and then we can pass in also the content which will be the content to write to file and we have file name as required and content as required and that is all you need now we can write to files and when we can write to files we can do all sorts of things so let's try this out now you need to be careful with this because it can write to any file right now so i will in fact add some question here so i will say sure is input do you want to write to file name and then if sure is yes and i will add here yes or no and if the sure is yes then we do this and otherwise we will return something um, error you are not allowed to write to this file so now we have a question so we don't actually write to some bad file 
So if we run this now, and we will say something like, write a story about a man named Mike into mikesstory.txt. Then what we'll do is it will say, call function write file. Do you want to write the file mikesstory.txt? And I'll say yes. And then we will do that. And it will probably answer something like, okay, I did that. Hopefully. Okay, it did not answer with that, so maybe I did something wrong. But let's cancel this and let's see. We actually have a Mike story here. So if we say code Mike's story, then here we have a story about a man named Mike in mikestory.txt. Now, I wonder why it called the write file function again. Perhaps GPT 3.5 is just a bit stupid, so it needs a system message. So let's do that. We could initialize the system message in here to say if the message is empty, then we add a system message, or we can just add it down here. So we could pass in here the messages. And we could say that messages is an array with a system message. So we can say here, role system and content will be. You are an AI bot that can do everything using function calls. When you are asked to do something, use the function calls you have available and then respond with a message confirming what you have done. So let's see if that will work. And I might actually want to do something like with open messages.json w s f f dot write json dumps messages. So we can inspect messages.json afterwards and I will add indent for. So it will be nicely formatted. So we can see what messages we are sending if, if it does something weird. So let's run this and say write a, well we could say write three jokes to a file called jokes.txt. Then it will call get jokes function. And then it will call write file function. So it will call them sequentially. And then I say, yes, I want to write to that file. And then it should tell me what it has done. Now, for some reason, it does not do that. So let's inspect what we have in the messages. I'm probably sending something wrong. So we have a system message. We have a user message, write three jokes. And then we get the jokes. And then we write file. And where's the other one? Okay, the problem is we are missing the call from ChatGPT. So we have only the result of the function. We don't have the ChatGPT calling the function. So it thinks it didn't call it already. So I have to append the function somewhere. Parse function response. Yes, so we have to append the message from ChatGPT. So this one to the messages. So we have to say messages.append message. And then it will work. So now if we close this and we run it again and we say write three jokes to a file called realjokes.txt then now it will do called function get jokes called function write file do you want to write the file realjokes.txt yes and then it will write it and then it says i have written three jokes to a file called realjokes.txt and then we can continue and if we take a look, we should have here real jokes.txt and we have the jokes in here. And now we should be able to ask it to do something like change the format of the file to be HTML. So then it will probably change this and it should update automatically because VS Code will update it. When I say yes, then actually it will make another file now. So it made real jokes.html. So if we open this, then here we have some jokes in HTML format. So now we can actually write code with this. So I can say like, create a JavaScript client side shopping cart app in index.html, script.js and style.css and make it save the products to local storage. And if we do that, then it will do something. It wants to write to index.html, so I'll say yes. And then it wants to write to script.js, so we'll say yes. And then we want to write to style.css, and we will say yes. 
I have created a JavaScript client-side shopping cart app in three files. <laughs> the products added to the shopping cart are saved to the local storage. So let us see if we actually have done that. So let's open the containing folder and let's open index.html. And here we have a shopping cart app. <laughs> Product one, add to cart. And it was added to cart. Now, now it still says no items in cart, so it doesn't work perfectly. But we can add these things in here and it works. And presumably if we refresh, well, it didn't work. Now, since this is an AI agent and it remembers the history, then we can say that uh, you forgot to implement loading the products from local storage. And then it hopefully understands that, okay, I have to update script.js to load the stuff from the local storage. And yes, it wants to write the script.js, I will say yes. And it has written something to script.js and it says apologies for the oversight. So if we refresh this now, then now we have them here. And we have some object object here because I have been playing around with my GBT autopilot and we probably have something in the local storage that is not supposed to be in there. So I will remove everything. And if I now add these things in here and I refresh, they stay there. So now it works. And that's all you have to do. And it took me one hour and seven minutes to create this. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And let me know in the comments, what do you want me to make this AI agent do next? And then I will do it. And if you want to play around with this code, I will post it on my GitHub and you can go there and download it and try not to destroy everything on your machine with this thing. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.